I often get asked, what kind of welder should I buy? But that's a loaded question. You first need to answer these three questions. One, what is it that you're doing? Are you a do-it-yourselfer? Are you a farmer? Are you a homesteader? What is it that you're doing? And what do you need it for? Two, what's your budget? Welders can range all the way from $100 all the way up to the tens of thousands of dollars. Three, what's your, what's your setup look like? So what's your setup like? Are you in a shop? Are you outside? Are you trying to be portable? Do you have 110 outlets? Do you have 220 hookup? That all comes into play. But what type of welder do I need? You hear people use the phrases like MIG, TIG, STICK, FIG, RIG, JIG, and you don't understand what it means. That's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's start off with arguably the most common form of welding, shielded metal arc welding, which is STICK. It's a manual welding process that uses a STICK electro. The pros involved with using shielded metal arc welding is that there's no gas. Gas is not required. You don't need gas. The flux creates its own atmosphere. Stick rods can burn through rust, grease. They can be used on farm equipment. They can be very structurally safe. They can be very structurally sound. They can be welded with in wind and outside. And probably the best feature is that you can get a stick welder pretty cheap. The cons involved in stick welding. It requires some practice and muscle memory in order to get good at it and efficient. There's a lot of sparks and there's slag involved. A lot of fumes are made during the process of arc welding. And often they don't leave the most attractive looking weld. Next, let's talk about gas metal arc welding, which is MIG. The pros are is that it's easy. It's a point and shoot application. It's easy to pick up, it's easy to learn. It's very neat and clean, and you can perform a very uniform weld with it. You can go from very, very thin material and just an adjustment on the knobs to all the way up to very, very thick material. Gas metal arc welding can be very versatile. It is also a really fast process. You can lay down a lot of bead quickly. The downside is that it requires a lot of consumables. You'll have a tank rental fee, you'll have to buy the gas, regulator, wind can often interfere with your shielding gas, and it requires different gases for different materials, such as tri gas for stainless and 75-25 mix on mild steel. This would be for a do-it-yourselfer fabricator, someone who has a shop, someone who is looking to produce a product, someone that wants to accomplish jobs quickly. Let's move on to the next one, gas tungsten arc welding. 
which is known as TIG. TIG can be used on very thin materials. TIG can also weld any metal that conducts electricity. So it's the most versatile of all your options. With enough practice, TIG welds can be very aesthetically pleasing. It leaves a very pretty looking weld. The problem with TIG welding is that it can be expensive. It too has a tank, which will come with rental fee and different gases. Because you are using a TIG torch in one hand, your filler material in your other, and you're controlling either with your thumb or with your on a foot pedal, your heat, working all three at the same time can be a difficult to master. There's also a lot of settings on a TIG welder. This process moves very slow. And also you have to make sure that your materials are very clean before you use it. Finally, let's talk about flux core. If gas metal arc welding and shielded metal arc welding had a baby, it would be flux core arc welding. So with flux core, you get all of the positives of Megan stick. It's easy to use. It can burn through rust and pitted metal. You can use it outside. You can use it in the wind. It doesn't require a gas. The downside to using flux core is it's very hard to weld thinner materials. It's very high spatter, there's lots of fume involved, there's slag, and it doesn't always produce the best looking weld. What about multi-purpose welders? Yeah, so they do make welders that'll do virtually anything. They'll plug into almost anywhere. You can take them on the go. You can hook up all different types of attachments, but that's also a con. There are too many accessories. That means there's more things to learn. There's more things to go wrong. And there's lots and lots and lots of money that can be piled up when you buy all these different accessories. But if you have the means to do so, and you have the time to learn them all, I would suggest that multi-purpose would be the welder for you. So, in conclusion, what type of welder should you buy? Well, if you're a farmer or a homesteader, or someone that is just looking to put patches or repairs and you just want to get the job done and you want to get it done inexpensively, I would suggest getting some sort of flux welding machine or shielded metal arc welding stick machine. If you are more of a hobbyist, if you're more of a fabricator, if you have a place where you can dedicate a welding area and you don't mind putting money into gases and tank rentals, then MIG, gas metal arc welding, might be your choice. But if you're a serious hobbyist and you're looking into thin material or you're working on cars or you're welding special types of metal and you're welding for a client, I recommend going with a TIG machine. But along with that, I also recommend taking classes. Well guys, I hope this cleared up a little bit of your questions. If you like more videos like this, let me know. Thanks for watching.